tax to manage 75% of Ghana's gold royalties from 12 mining companies, the Japa Mineral Royalties deal, according to many, was a crescendo of all things unholy in Ghana's ever-continuous dance with privatization of funds and national assets. The company set up in tax haven, Jersey, was also expected to enjoy tax release with the company's shares to be floated on the London Stock Exchange with the nation receiving some 500 million cities at the time to aid budgetary expenditure. The deal would be suspended, however, after then-special prosecutor Martin Amidu's corruption risk assessment. Nearly four years on, the deal remained suspended, with key government persons hinting of its return. It was all quiet until the Minerals Income Investment Fund in February of this year revealed $12 million had been spent on the Bosch deal. Because this was an IPO, and um, as honorable members are aware, for every IPO, consultants, etc. come in. The establishment of an office in the United Kingdom um, and also in Ghana, etc. come into play. So there have been expenses. The whole idea was for MIF to be reimbursed after the IPO. Um, but as the IPO is now suspended, um, we, we, until, until that suspension is lifted, we, we can't uh, move on with Ejapa. How much have you spent so far in, in relation to Ejapa? I'll get the exact figure, but it should be around 12 million. 12 million? Yes. Dollars? 12 million dollars, right? 12 million dollars. The revelations has prompted fresh calls for the outright termination of the deal. The latest to make the demand are 14 civil society groups who insist the scandalous deal must be abrogated. According to the coalition of CSOs, they are aware of other Ijapalink processes that are ongoing, including negotiating a bilateral investment treaty and a double taxation agreement with Jersey, where the Japan Royalties Limited was intending to be hosted. It will not be the first time the call has been made. As to whether there will be a response this time round, only time 